Okay, um, so we're gonna talk about symmetry uh, and then we're gonna do our Tai Chi exercises and we're gonna do Tai Chi with this, after this discussion with the, those concept, concepts in mind and see how it influences how we move and how we relate to what we're doing, okay? Now, so we're gonna start here at the top level. Let's look at the, the way it's spelled. There's, there's beautiful symmetry in the word symmetry. The two M's opposite each other, flanked by the Y's. I think that's kind of interesting, if, if not just coincidental. We, the definitions of symmetry are, can be applied to mathematics, art, and physics. And those are just three. I, I haven't clicked on all yet, and I can't do it because this is a screenshot. But I bet if I pick all, I'll see a lot of other areas, maybe biology. And I know it's present in biology because I happen to be a biologist. Um, in fact, just pulling something out of my head, uh, if you look at any molecule, it always has a, um, a racemer, they call them, they call them racemers or mirror images. And so if you take an amino acid, you can actually create that in its um, asymmetric, in its symmetrical form, which is the mirror image. And they call about, they call them L forms and S forms for some reason. And it turns out that it's the L form, that's only the L form that's active uh, in biology. And that's interesting in itself. Uh, but, um, Let's take a, let's drill down and, and let's just examine this definition in a little more detail. What it says here is the quality of being made up of exactly similar parts facing each other and around an axis. And let's see how we can apply this to some of the Tai Chi principles that we've learned. So exactly similar parts facing each other. Um, when we do the Tai Chi, sun system, we do it in one direction and guess what? We do it in the other direction. So there's a symmetry there. Uh, and also when we do the movements within each direction, often the movements are done in a completely symmetrical way. Can you see me now? So even the simple form that we do often in sun style of moving our hands out and in is very symmetrical. There's symmetry in the way the, the hands are going out in opposite directions and, and in together, right? It's just that simple movement. We see the symmetry uh, in cloud hands as the hounds are moving in opposite directions. So in this case, cloud hands right, my right hand is moving in a clockwise direction. My left hand is moving in a counterclockwise direction turning at the waist and then moving in the other direction. So it's bi-directional symmetrical in both directions, all right? And I'm just taking a few of these things, um, these things that we do um, and as they come to mind, uh, we do deflect parry punch. One hand moving in, one hand moving out, drawing in and drawing out, all right? And this brings up another form of symmetry that is when we talk about forces, by pushing out and pulling in, I'm actually being able to exaggerate or accentuate those forces and increase those forces in both directions. Whether I'm pulling something in or pushing something out alone or doing both at the same time, the actual movement in one direction is balancing the movement in the other direction um, and adding more force uh, to both movements, either individually or collectively. And so that's, that's another form of symmetry. If we think about force, symmetry and force. Um, let's go a little bit deeper into this, regularity, uniformity, and consistency. So, by now, you know that I have emphasized doing things the same way each time at the same pace, 
right? We've been practicing that. We've been training for that. We do that with our breathing, maintaining a temp, uh, tempo in our breathing throughout the set at the, exactly the same rate, not increasing or decreasing it. And in fact, it, breathing in itself has asymmetry. Of course, as we inhale and exhale, we try to do that with the same regularity. Uh, and and the same tempo throughout the 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 um, the movements that we do in the set. Okay, so we practice the set. We try to do it the same way each time. Uniformity. We breathe with a regularity. We try to be consistent. And if we think about it on a philosophical level of how we live, that's a good way to live. To be consistent uniform and regular. In other words, not do things too much in one direction, go too much in one direction or too much in other direction. They kind of call, they call that the middle ground. And I, for one, believe that the middle ground is the place to be. It's the safest place to be um, you know, we go too far in any direction, even when in terms of happiness, uh, we end up being hurt uh, because if you get too happy and you get maybe things don't go the way they should go and you expect them to go the way they, uh, they should go, then you get more, you get hurt, you get more depressed, right? So being in the middle allows us to adjust in either direction. Uh, moving down the list here, I, and I'm just, I just threw this up. It's the first thing I found this morning when I looked up the definition. Correct or pleasing proportion of the parts of things. It's another uh, definition of symmetry. And as we can apply this to Tai Chi, and it's really an exquisite um, equivalence to Tai Chi. Remember, I think I've said that, I think I said it, if I haven't, I'm gonna say it now. I often tell people, when you do Tai Chi, if it feels right, it's probably right. If it feels, doesn't feel right, it's probably wrong. Correct or pleasing proportion of the parts of things. We see somebody doing, doing Tai Chi, especially a master, it looks beautiful. It's pleasing in proportions. Talk about balance in Tai Chi. We talk about harmony, something, being harmonious, being equanimous. All those things relate to symmetry, um, exact correspondence between different things. That's beautiful. This movement looks very different than this movement. They're opposites but they exactly correspond to each other because they're mirror images. And we're gonna do some exercises that will help us engender some of these feelings. And um, I hope that by examining some of this stuff, uh, we can bring this um, into our practice and make our practice stronger. And, um, and I think by, after, and by the end of the session, you'll feel more, more power and you'll feel more chi, more energy. I hope that's what we're going to accomplish today. So let's start doing our exercises and let's do some uh, relaxation, get some tension out of our shoulders, right? bring our shoulders up and around and down. And I'm just calling this movement out explaining it for those people who are visually impaired, coming up, around, down, and the other way, reverse the movement. So we've done it in one direction and then we're gonna do it in the opposite direction, which is this mirror image or, and here we have a perfect example of symmetry. We haven't even done Tai Chi. 
what we're doing is these exercises. Okay, grab a shoulder and pull across. One hand up around your neck on the other side. Grab your um, elbow, that is, and pull and look in the opposite direction. Stretching out the shoulder muscles. One more on the other side. On the other side. Okay, make two fists, bring your fists out in front of you, open and close your hand, uh, your fingers, just shoot them in and out, like you're grabbing something and letting it go. And if, if you're feeling, um, if you're having difficulty with this and feeling some pain or stiffness, just go easy with it. And, and that applies to everything else we do, of course. And as you do this, relax your shoulders, drop your shoulders round your, round uh, the hollow of your chest. Let's do 50. And don't forget to breathe. You know, I say these things and as I say them, it doesn't mean that I'm, doing them. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't breathing and that reminded me to remind you to breathe as you do this. So I was holding my breath. Let's take a closing breath this time. Stop that exercise. Scoop up, bring energy up from the earth, grab energy from the heavens, metaphorically speaking. Deep breath, exhales, we push down and relax. Okay, bringing the arms up. We want to open and close, holding this ball of energy. And we pull out as we feel this, we feel this resistance as we pull out and resistance as we push in. And then now we're going to reverse the hands. We're going to pull one hand, twist one palm down, twist the other palm up in a very symmetrical way, the same pace, and rotate one down and turn and look at the palm to the right or to the left, whichever way you went. Come back, relax to holding a ball. And now turn the palms twisting in the opposite direction, symmetrically turn, turning to the other side, blocking down, turning and looking. Come back, turn, look, block down, come back, turn, look, block down. Turn slowly all the way. Turn back and look and turn back and look. So we stretch, we breathe in. We relax, relax, we breathe out. Breathing in, coming back to center. Breathe out, coming back to center. Sorry, breathe in as we stretch out. So forth. Okay, come back, holding the ball open and close and come back down, relax. All right, let's hold that ball again and open and close. And now rotate one hand, let's turn the ball over 180 degrees and then back again. So this is a good example of symmetry. You really see it in this movement. And if we do this slowly with intent and mentally focus on it, it 
introduces this feeling of a, 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 a harmonious feeling internally. At least that does for me. Especially if you breathe while you're doing it and you do it slowly. If you do it fast, you're going to lose this. Trying to keep the hands always opposite each other. And the ball holding analogy is works really well here. Because if you really imagine you're holding that ball, you don't want to drop it. You'll do this perfectly. And it should be symmetrical in the shape as well as the, the movement, how the pace. And now let's bring it to one side. Turn and look. Now this is a, a waist and spine exercise, so turn as much as you can without stressing yourself, without causing pain. And then coming back to center, holding a ball. Turn the ball around in 180 degrees and turn as far as you can and look to the other side. You want to really stretch your, your spine and your, and the lower back as far as you can. Don't overdo it if you feel any pain or stiffness, all right? And now we're just going to turn this into a pushing movement to one side and the other. pushing one arm out horizontally across to the other side, bringing the other, the, the arm that's forward, bringing it back, the elbow in and back now, so that both palms are facing out to the side with the fingers facing forward as we turn, again, turning at the waist. I was doing Tai Chi this morning outside. I was doing this exercise, thinking about some of the concepts that we've discussed that I've talked about this morning. Feeling really relaxed and the squirrel pops up. Never seen that here before. This beautiful spotted squirrel sat up in front of me, walked around. Hey, Pay a little bit of attention to me. I was moving the whole time. And this squirrel wasn't phased by it at all. It seemed like it wasn't bothering. Usually if you move, when you're, you know, if you've got an animal like that around you and you're moving, you'll run away. But if you're moving in a symmetrical way, the animal senses that. That sense of equanimity and it, it's disarming. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it's not alarming because it's smooth and natural. It's the way they live. You know, it's the way they, they behave without even training. We have to train because as babies, this comes naturally, but then we lose it. And then we have to do stuff, work really hard at regaining the natural flow of things in nature. At least that's my feeling. Uh, I gotta go out tomorrow and try it again and see if that little guy will come back and I can learn something from him or her. Maybe he, he or she learned something from me. Who knows? Anyhow.
So as you move in one direction, you should reach the other side. Just before you reach the other side, you should be turning and pushing to the other side. And there should be some rhythm to this. And smooth, and it should be smooth and regular. Okay. Then let's come back to center, holding a ball, open, close, and come back and just relax. relax. Now we're gonna move down. Nothing new about any of these exercises. Do them every week. I don't know if you can, you can see, uh, but all I'm doing is lifting my heel, leaving my toe on the ground, and then using my toe as a fulcrum, just swiveling my heel back and forth to exercise my, my ankle. putting the foot down completely and then rocking from side to side. If you like, you can lift your foot up. Uh, but lifting the foot up allows you to get more range of movement. And now the other foot. Rock back and forth. Side to side. Okay, good. Okay, so to take this uh, discussion of symmetry a little bit further. Um, and, you know, we've been, we've been talking about symmetry around, around an axis and how the, uh, these the symmetrical movements are complementary. And if we think about symmetry as applied to force and physics, it's exactly the same thing. It's a little different concept. And I wanna talk about that a little bit because I'm sure you guys can relate to it having done Tai Chi now for many weeks with me or with other people. Um, and if you notice in Tai Chi, Tai Chi of course originated as a martial art. So all the movements have martial applications. And you'll notice that if we start, uh, let's just take some of the movements that we know, that we, we've learned, you guys have learned in practice, Um, in the sun style and see if we can apply symmetrical principles to them that, um, and that speak to generation of force, all right? You'll see what I mean as, we, as, we, as I go through and give you some examples of this. Um, so, you know, after the opening move, uh, we do a, we eventually, we, we come to, um, a move that's called single whip, right? And single whip comes after open and close, right? So if we start with open and close first, we can use this as an example, all right? Um, if I apply this, this open and close move to an application, it would look like this. If you can imagine two people that I'm flanked by, slightly in back of me, if I bring my arms up like this and spring my arms back using the energy in my core and my chest, muscles in my chest, it can generate a force that'll push those people away simply by doing this. Now, if you do this one hand with one arm, I want you to try doing this with two arms. If you can, 
is imagine that you're striking back in both directions, using the back of your shoulders to push someone, two people back that are attacking you from the, from the, from the rear, okay? And feel the energy there, right? Feel the energy. And now put one hand down and do it. What do you, what do you feel? What's the difference? And now add a little more force to it. It's almost a little painful. And if you do it too fast, you can actually tear some muscles. Because this side is stationary and this side is moving. By doing it together, you're adding more energy to both forces delivered on both sides. So you see where I'm going with this. And you see this so much in Tai Chi. Even if I'm going to use my right arm to defend myself, it helps to use your left arm in the opposite direction to balance the force, even if I'm not using this to strike to the left. So by doing it symmetrically, I'm able to generate much more energy than if I, if I did it asymmetrically. So that's the here, that's the lesson here. So let's go through the sun system. And since you've already, you, you already know all these moves and let's examine this, this uh, concept of symmetry. which is pivotal to today's lesson, okay? Um, so let's take another one. I could let you let one of you guys do it. And, and, and uh, if you want, you can take the lead and, and, and go through it and explain it because you all know it. You know all this stuff, right? Just, we're just teasing it apart a little bit. So I think of cloud hands right away. I want to use cloud hands to strike to the right. I'm going to wind up here and strike to, to the right. I might use my elbow to strike to the right. Um, if I pull across with this hand in this direction at the same time, I'm balancing that force out. So I can wind up and deliver the force by using the a kind of a symmetrical movement. Okay. We see this in single whip. I might want to reach out and strike to the right. But if I push in with an equal force in the opposite direction, it exaggerates the force in, in the first direction, single whip, whether it's done this way or this way. Same thing with brush knee. So we do brush knee this way, right? Or this way, it's opposite. This is the opposite direction. What's going on here? Two forces, one is a striking in the sagittal direction and the other one is a block in the horizontal plane. So here we've got two, two uh, movements done in different planes, but they're still symmetrical because they're balancing each other out. Now I, I might want to just use this force at times or, or maybe use just this force. So I might want to use the force in the sagittal direction or the blocking force in the horizontal direction. But in, in, uh, in any case, by pulling a, if I, for example, if I want to, if I want to push out and strike out with the, in the sagittal direction, by complementary, by using the complementary force in the horizontal direction, I'm able to add more force to the sagittal. And conversely, if I want to block, just simply block, if I block, which is a horizontal force, if I apply a sagittal force at the same time, I can add more energy to the block. 
And then you see it in particular, it's very easy to see in deflection. In the, we do two deflections followed by parry and punch. Now I might want to deflect and just use one hand. Often I'm only deflecting with one hand, not both hands, right? Wouldn't make sense. But if I deflect and at the same time pull back, the deflection has more with the other hand, the, deflect, the deflection with in the one in the first direction has more energy. And even with parry and punch, there are times where I might want to parry something aside, push a, block, a strike aside without punching. And there are times when I don't need to parry, where I might just want to reach out and punch. But if I do them in, both at the same time, it adds more energy to both of those forces. Whether I do it this way, right? Or whether I do it this way. Okay. Uh, and lastly, <laughs> I just thought of this. Within the set, there's this exquisite symmetry, right? Can anyone guess why? Part one and part two. What do we do in part one? We do it in one direction. And hey, guess what? Part two, we do it in the other direction. In the, in the symmetrical, in the mirror image uh, of, of, the, of the first direction. Or you can look at it a right-handed and left-handed. And even in nature, there are right-handed and left-handed uh, helices and right-handed and left-handed molecules. Okay, enough of that nonsense. Um, so let's get down to doing the form. And when we go through the form, let's um, try to be aware of some of these things we've talked about. Relax, sit up straight, feet on the ground. You can't see my feet on the ground, but they are on the ground. Let's establish a real intimate contact with the ground. Remember, Tai Chi is 70% from the waist down. And in all the movements, we want to feel a force coming up from the ground. Uh, that force gets, or energy gets transmitted uh, uh, and through the waist and then from the waist to the arms and finally the hands. Sitting up straight. Hands at our sides. Bring the arms out straight. Fingers pointing down, holding a ball. Breathe in. Bring the ball into the waist and down. Push straight out. Bring the ball in to the chest. Breathe in, open and close. That's commencement, open and close. Single whip. Turn the palms facing out. Push straight out a few inches. Extend the arms to the sides like a swallow's wings. Bring the right hand down in an arc across the knees, lining the right palm, facing down up under the left elbow. Switch the hands up and down, maintaining our position at the left side of our body and the same distance between both hands. Turning both hands at the same time to the other side, the right side, We reach the right shoulder line. We switch the hands up and down symmetrically. And keep going, pulling to the left. Switch both hands up and down. Remember to breathe. Pull both hands to the right shoulder line. And at this point, let's turn the lower palm up, bring it up in an arc as we turn and 
facing forward, we bring that left hand opposite the right hand. Now we're holding the ball again and we open and close. Breathing in and out. Brush knee, turn to the right, folding both hands down to the right, over to the right side until the right fingers touch the right, uh, right elbow. We turn at the same time to the right, looking at that right palm. Here we're in a sprung position, a coiled position. We uncoil as we brush knee, straightening out the, the, the left hand, the lower hand, thumb down, reaching, blocking across as we turn the waist with the hands, bringing the left hand into the thigh as we push out with the right hand forward. Striking forward with the right hand through the shoulder line, sweeping across with the left hand, bringing it into the thigh. And now play the loop, switching the hands up and down like we're turning a wheel. Left hand comes up, right hand comes down, palms facing each other, Right palm down, left palm up. The arms are bent about 90 degrees. The palms are about a arm's length apart. Upper palm about head high. Left thumb facing the fa uh, our face, our nose. All right. So what we've done is we, we've turned that wheel, we've gone to playing the loop. We turn both palms facing each other by turning the right palm up, the lower palm up, the upper palm down. Pulling the upper palm down, brushing it across the lower palm as it comes up, palm up. Pulling and pushing, extending both hands, pulling the left hand, which was the upper palm down again to the waist, the thumb touching the thigh, just like before when we did brush knee. That position is that ready position of the lower hand. Turning both palms over again, pulling in, pushing out, sweeping the hands past each other, striking out, pulling in, lower palm coming down, face down, knuckle attached, thumb attached to or near the right side at the waist or the thigh. Make two fists at this point, holding the left fist across the chest as we strike up with the right fist. I have the fist up over the left fist which is now pointing to the right and under the right elbow. Open both palms, cross them in front of you like a butterfly at the wrists or right inside of the right wrist touching the outside of the left wrist. And now we're gonna pull back and down to the face and keep those palms up. You're gonna bring the elbows down, but you're gonna bring the palms back, but they're not gonna drop. So you should form a triangle and you should be able to look through that triangle in front of you. You're protecting your face from a strike. It's a splitting force as you bring the hands down slightly, push down and up and out. Careful not to lock your elbows. Turn the palms facing each other like you're holding the ball, bring the ball back. You should have your ball and now again, as, as always in front of your chest, slowly open as you breathe in, feeling the gentle resistance as you pull out and push in, feeling the gentle resistance as you push the ball back to its original shape, not too, not too small. And we wanna keep ourselves from being constricted, either too open or too closed. And that's a yin-yang principle. 
of not going to the extremes. All right, if we wanna end our Tai Chi here, we've just done 12 movements in one direction. Take a deep breath in, push the hands straight out, arms straight out and exhale, bringing the hands down either to your lap if you're sitting, or if you're standing, you bring them to your side. The palms at your sides, arms relaxed, shoulders relaxed, chin tucked in, crown raised. But we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna go and do this, do it in a symmetrical direction, the other direction. So we end with open and close. Forget about the commencement, single whip. Push out and extend. Now the commencement is asymmetrical. It's the same in both directions. All right. And now we're going to form up. We're going to draw up on the right hand side after the single whip. It's the opposite of before. We're going to bring the left hand down and arc across the waist, lining up the left. Uh, palm, which is down under the right elbow. Right palm is still up as a move, facing out about head level. And of course, we set up our cloud hands by switching up and down. Now we got it set up, so we're ready to go. Pull both hands to the left, turning the spine, maintaining upright posture. Switch up and down, maintaining distance between the hands. Pull to the right again, both hands together. Let's keep going. Left, switch, pull to the right. And as you make these switches, these change in direction, directions, whether we're up or down with the hands or to the left or the right with, with the body or around the spine. When just before we reach the other side, we're gonna already, we're not gonna really stop or stutter. We're gonna already continue to move. So what I want you to try to do is do this cloud hands exercise without actually stopping. So we're rounding everything out, smoothing everything out. I'm just doing it at my own pace. And I'm just going to come back. And it doesn't matter which side you're on. At this point, at one side or the other, left to the left or to the right, one hand above the other, you're gonna turn the lower palm up and bringing it up, sweeping in an arc across as you turn forward and turn the palm out facing the other palm and open and close, breathing in and out. Brush knee to the other side. We're gonna, Fold the arms to the left this time. Right fingers on left elbow as we turn to the left, looking back at the left-hand side. We're wound up here like a spring on the left-hand side, ready to deliver energy as we unwind, sweeping across, extending the, the lower hand, touching uh, the hand of which is touching the elbow of the left hand. Extend that arm straight, thumb down, pushing across horizontally as we turn and pull it in and push forward and out back through the shoulder, left shoulder line with the left, the left hand like a stop sign. Now your right palm should be down at your waist with a thumb touching or near the right waist or thigh. Playing the lute is going to be in the opposite direction, right? Because now we're left hand is up, the right hand is down. And so we're going to turn the wheel to the left, bringing the left hand down under the wheel, the right hand up. Palms are facing each other now. 
both thumbs are up, the right hand is up, both arms are bent 90 degrees, the right thumb is, is facing the nose about head high, uh, my right palm is pushing to the left, my left palm is pushing uh, to the right, my right palm is up pushing to the left. Ready for deflection. First one, turn the palms over, left palm up, right palm down. Strike up and pass the other palm, bringing the right palm down to the waist. You should be gently brushing the palms together as you do this move. As we gently turn the palms over and strike back up in the other direction, left palm pulling down, right palm pushing up, palms passing each other. Make two fists. We're punching, we fold the right fist over across the chest as we parry, as we strike up over the left wrist. And the punch should be up in an upward up, uh, direction. Open the, palm, the palms up, facing out. Crossed at the wrist, slowly and gently open the palms, drawing them apart, bringing the elbows down, bringing the palms in to the face. You should see a triangle that between your forefingers and your thumbs, looking right through that triangle, protecting your face, bringing the palms down slightly with the elbows, pushing down and up. Bring the palms back in. Take a deep breath in, open, and close. That's 24 movements. If we wanted to stop now, we can extend the arms straight out. It's the opposite of the commencement. And bring the hands down, either to our laps if we're sitting, or to our sides if we're standing. But we're going to go on. So after the open and close, we're going to do one more brush knee to the right side, just like the other, the last brush knee. We're going to put the right fingers on the left elbow. We're going to fold both hands to the left, placing the left, uh, the right fingers on the left elbow. Look, turning to the left, looking to the left, the left palm. Sweeping across with the right hand, pushing forward, turning at the waist, brush knee. Man walking, straightening out his clothes. This compound move, many movements. First of which is to turn the right palm facing your side and pretend you're pulling a gun or something out of a holster. It's a circular movement, bringing it the palm up and straight out. You should be like you're holding a ball at one point. So you push that right hand out, palm out, facing the other palm until a point where it's just past the left palm, facing the right palm. And now bring your left fingers in, touching the right wrist. Open those hands up like you're folding open a book and bring the, the palms down and in to your chest and then up. So this is a circular movement, down and up, palms under the chin. And your right fingers, both palms are up, your right finger should be now connected to, your, to the, the inside of the right wrist. And I want you to maintain that connection throughout the, all of the rest of the movements. Even though you're going to be turning the palms, those left fingers are going to be touching the left side of the right wrist throughout all these movements. Coming up under the chin, push out, extending like you're offering something. And this is called Fair Lady offering a book. Maintaining the contact of the left fingers to the right wrist, palms up. You're going to turn around your waist, sit up straight, don't, don't lean, all the way to the right as far as you can. 
Now you're gonna bring both hands in and you're gonna to start to rotate the right palm around like you're gonna be holding a tray in a restaurant serving people. And you're gonna bring it and the palm is up. You're gonna bring it up under, uh, 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 on top of your on top of your shoulders. Now the palm should be up on top of your shoulder, and you're at the same time you're going to twist the left palm up, maintaining contact with the wrist, the fingers with the wrist, and now turn forward. So you're like you're holding a tray. You're bringing the tray around. The tray was outside. You're bringing the tray around underneath your chin. And now when you're completely forward, you're going to use that finger as a hinge. The left palm is now gonna turn around almost 180 degrees to the point where it's facing out, still touching the fingers, the, the wrist. And so now both palms are facing out. And the fingers of the left, left palm are still attached to the inside of the right wrist. And you're going to pretend that using that lower palm to guide a strike forward, just like brush knee, the right palm. You're pushing out with both palms now, facing out. And now you're going to bring, you're going to rotate back around and release both hands. So they're facing each other as they come into holding a ball. And you're gonna open and close. And now we're going to do a single whip. And now we're going to turn to the right, turning both hands around together. This would be kind of like a mannequin, the hands out, both turning together. And we're gonna make a fist with the right hand. And as we turn, naturally, that left palm is gonna start facing to the right. We're gonna bring that fist around in a arc, in a circle like we're grabbing something and making a fist. And we're gonna, as we turn forward, we're gonna strike under the left elbow. So the left palm is up, just like play the loop, facing to the right. And the right hand here is we made a fist, the eye of the fist up, push, punching, punching under the left elbow. It's called punch under elbow. So we've learned um, a new movement, punch under elbow. But there were some other moves in between that we already know. So we come out of man, the complex uh, movement called man walking straight neck, straightening out his clothes by coming forward and opening and closing, which is what we already know how to do. And we know how to do single whip. And now all we've done is add a new step, which is punch under elbow, which is turning to the right in an arc, swinging the hands around, making a fist with the right hand, bringing it down in an arc. And as we turn, this left hand is coming forward and this right hand is right, a fist is punching under the left elbow the left hand up, palm facing to the right. Now, there's a lot of applications here. One application is, um, we already have gone through some of the applications with the single whip, but as, we're, as we turn, this could be a strike back, the right hand, or a block back. This is a push forward or parry with the right hand. And as we come down, we make an arc to generate power to come by. And basically what we're doing here is we're just punching under the elbow and the left hand is up here blocking. 
All right. Another way to use this is to parry high punch to the right with the upper hand to parry, just like we did in when we parried around with a uh, wrist with a with a fist closed and punched over the wrist. Here we're parrying up with an open hand, pushing a strike aside and punching under the elbow to the ribs, to the short ribs. All right, so that's what we're doing here. This is not a course in self-defense, but it's helpful to know the applications so that you do the move right. So the move looks like this. Beautiful move, the hands going around symmetrically in opposite direct together in, in the same direction, forming a big wide circle, winding up, making a fist coming in and punching and blocking at the same time. A lot going on there, guys. Um, well, anyway, that's the adaptation of this, uh, use of this movement in a sitting position. It's 